XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. But this question of interoperability and the fact that we have something which is coordinated as a framework at the international level. Because if you have a virtual asset service provider subject to rules on one side, sending the money to another country, where the rules are different or where the rules don't exist. That's where you have the challenge. Because they are obliged to, to apply rules and they can oblige just one leg of the rule, not the other one, that, uh, uh, meaning that they don't have access to the information related to the beneficiary, for example. Because the first thing that we have to do is to convince these uh, new actors that, yes, there is an added value to be supervised and to implement certain rules. Why they are an added value? Because it will help them also to develop sustainable activity. And uh, it's good for the integrity of their business. So that's what they have to understand. That from the very beginning, we have worked with the industry to test also the possibility of our standards. Though when we have established our standard, we, we felt stronger. Because as we have worked with the industry, the industry couldn't say, your standard is not applicable. So that's also something which is important and the lesson which is very important to continue also to, uh, to promote. And we have what we call uh, within the FATF a virtual asset contact group where we meet on a very regular basis with a different component of the industry uh, working on new, te new technology. This is coming straight from the Bank of International Settlements when we're talking about the public and the private relationship that is needed to make sure that the Internet of Value has its legs and has its foundation sturdy enough so we can have real world full blown adoption when we're talking about crypto assets. OK, and that's exactly what we're happening right now. You see, the big conglomerates over time in this space have allowed the private sector, we're talking about Ripple, we're talking about Coinbase, just to name a few, to build out this ecosystem, to build out the infrastructure so they can essentially bring in their trillions and bring in their quadrillions and tokenize all of these assets on a distributed blockchain ledger. One thing that we have to understand about these assets, especially when we're talking about XRP, it's not a security. It's not a stock. It's not a share. The longer that Judge Annalisa Torres does not rule on this case, it essentially gives more clarity to the market. Why do I say that? We've seen BlackRock, Fidelity, NASDAQ, to just to name a few, have already given the green light of crypto. The biggest international funds, IMF, Bank of International Settlements, have already given the green light to crypto as well. So essentially, it's like, look, the Ripple versus the SEC case really doesn't even matter. It's just drama on the stage. It's just something to where we need to keep our eyes on. And don't blink in that case too because Judge Annalisa Torres, she's about to slam that gavel down real soon right when the market needs it and it needs it right now. I'm going to say it one more time. XRP is not a security. It is a utility protocol to tokenize value. Protocols. The behind the scenes. The rail works. The frameworks. It is here to tokenize over four quadrillion dollars. I'm going to say that again. The tokenized value of assets that's out there right now, it is four quadrillion dollars. Okay. The derivatives market alone is over $2.5 quadrillion. If XRP and the XRP ledger is just to capture 10% of one market, that's already $50 trillion on their books. Okay? There is more also when you're talking about the tokenization of all assets. You're talking about the housing market. You're talking about the shares market, debt, commodities, etc. XRP. Just to get 10%, just 
percent of the global markets when you're talking about tokenization of all assets a one thousand dollar xrp price is gonna be peanuts it's gonna be peanuts with just 10 percent of the global market that's how we're gonna start off today's show family make sure that you hit that like button make sure that you smash that subscribe button You know, every time that you come on this channel, family is going to be bullish. Chris Larson told us about this Cambrian explosion is near. Ripple is the Amazon of crypto, and they told us that they have the leverage with the water when they have the liquidity leveraging this agnostic exchange token to tokenize all the value. When we're talking about a Cambrian explosion, we're talking about something that's not going to be able to be contained. 10% of the world's tokenized value on the XRP ledger sends the price of XRP to the stratosphere. Let's check out this video from Chris Larson, one of the founders of the Amazon of Crypto himself. Tell us what's about to come next for XRP in the XRP ledger. The potential then for, as you're saying, an explosion of uh, economic development, which is why the developing world central banks and regulators are so much behind all this because we'll we'll have markets uh, of billions of people who are not connected to markets today. Yeah, it, it, will, it will create a huge economic growth, just like that shipping container did, just like the internet connecting 3 billion people and growing, um, what about a 20, 20% increase in global GDP in about five years? So the implications here are huge. And governments have really been getting behind this. That's it's really encouraging. You know, in 2014, it was a kind of dark days for regulation in the blockchain in space. Now, I think the regulators are getting behind uh, systems that make sense, like interoperability, and getting behind digital assets. Because, uh, again, I, uh, the cryptocurrencies, the digital assets, whatever you want to call them, they also play a key role in that. Once you get the plumbing in place, those new types of assets that have no counterparties uh, create incredible efficiencies to reduce capital uh, that has, has to otherwise be kept by banks all over the world. Could be used for IoT, because again, probably um, once you get that infrastructure in place, most payments will be machine to machine. So that also kind of, you know, again, once you solve the developing world problem, that also solves the IoT problem. So the explosion in the number of transactions is tremendous, and that drives a lot of what uh, the demand for. Uh, for digital assets, which regulators are, and banks are getting behind now. This is what Chris Larson is telling us what's about to come to this brand new digital asset space. Massive demand for these cryptos. And again, I tell everybody, look, if you're still out here gambling, okay, you're still out here trying to make a quick book, you're gonna get burned, man. 99% of these digital assets, when these regulations actually come down, 99% of these meme coins and dog coins and scam coins, they're going to go down to zero. This is what it's all about. Does these digital assets, do they actually have a real world use case like XRP, setting the standard, FX settlements, cross border payments, micro payments, smart contracts, sourcing global liquidities, medium of exchange, brick currencies, bank to bank payments? We've seen Ripple over the past year, essentially over the past three months, unleash the true value of XRP by going in and having these verticals in their business. We've seen bank to bank payments from Ripple. We've seen sourcing global liquidity from Ripple. We've seen micro payments from Naveen Gupta. I've showed it on the High Vibes channel. We understand for sure that cross border payments is going to be the number one tool that's going to send things to the stratosphere and securities and FX settlements. Let's not forget how powerful this is. Here we have right here, family, I'm showing you on the screen that this is something that we have the opportunity to front run the big institutional players that we have. XRP is now in the gambling industry. Shuffle betting platform is now accepting XRP for an exciting betting experience. This is the reason why XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created, because it does not matter what form of business or what form that you are in, you can utilize XRP in the XRP ledger. You see, when we're talking about liquidity, let's not forget family, banking crisis are still here to this day. We are still $32 trillion in debt. Absolutely. 
Ripple's on-demand liquidity volume right now is surging in the Asia, in the Pacific markets. It's surging. This asset is being adopted. This thing is happening right in front of our faces. I got a ripple right here. I got a video that's showing us, family, that even though inside of the United States, we still don't have the movement that we think that they need. Cryptocurrency and especially XRP is being adopted all the way around the world. The in principle approval for a major payment license from the MAS. So tell us, what does this mean for Ripple's operations in Singapore and the Asia Pacific? It allows us to offer regulated digital payment token products and services, which will enable us to better support and scale uh, the use of on-demand liquidity or ODL. Uh, by our customers in Singapore and across the APAC region uh, and that are looking to explore blockchain and digital asset technologies for their cross-border payment and treasury use cases. With on-demand liquidity volumes surging in Asia Pacific, uh, we know that there's great appetite from customers in the region to engage and explore with blockchain and digital assets. Um, and this obtaining the in principle approval uh, of the major payment institution license to better support these progressive customers and scale our ODL services to ultimately build a more inclusive and, and borderless financial system. Okay, right. Rahul, so how does Singapore then fit into Ripple's global operations? Singapore's location makes it uh, a prominent gateway to emerging markets in Southeast Asia. Uh, as well as developed markets across the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we're a global business and we remain hyper focused on building our teams outside of the US. Uh, about 90% of our business is global uh, and Singapore and to a large degree the, the broader APAC region is one of our fastest growing regions and remains high on our list for recruiting. You know, at the start of the year, there was speculation that Ripple's case with the US SEC will be settled by mid year. Well. We're here now. Can you give us an update on how the legal case is unfolding? We continue to push for a speedy resolution uh, and we look forward to proving that Ripple did not violate securities law and that the SEC never provided Ripple with a fair notice that its actions would ever be prohibited under the law. Um, the decision and timing is ulti ultimately up to the judge. Uh, we don't have any control over that. This is one thing that we have to understand, family, that's happening in the demand or on-demand liquidity and the demand for that product is absolutely skyrocketing right now at the moment. You're probably not seeing it with the price and you will see it here very soon with the price. But let's not forget, family, all of the other companies that submitted an amicus brief inside of the Ripple versus the SEC case. The Amazon of crypto is not the only company that is leveraging this technology. We've seen the biggest conglomerates going to be leveraging this technology. Also, as well with these small businesses, they're going to be utilizing it too as well. Let's go ahead and take a backtrack real quick to the Ripple versus the SEC case and let's see what we have to understand that this on-demand liquidity product is being adopted around the world at this moment because they understand that this is a technological revolution that's going to upgrade our financial system. Let's go ahead and take a look at this family. It says right here, through its proposed amicus brief, I remits offers the court an important perspective that of an actual on-demand liquidity customer that uses XRP, simply put, market participants like I remit do not use XRP as an investment of any kind. Rather, it is a tool for payment transfers. It is used because of its speed, efficiency, and security, not because of any expectation that its inherent value will increase over time. The way in which iRemits uses on-demand liquidity, which in turn uses XRP and the XRP ledger, demonstrate that there is not, in fact, securities in any sense of the words. In sum, iRemits perspective of on-demand liquidity customer will aid the court in its consideration of the SEC's lawsuit and defend its motions for summary judgment. This is what we're talking about, okay? 
This is a private and public relationship. This is a brand new technological revolution that everyone is going to have to use if you're going to participate in payments, if you're going to participate with the moving value on these tokenized ledger, XRP and the XRP ledger is at the center at the very, very core of this brand new financial system. And you just can't get around that, family. This is what it is. This is the moment in time that we've been waiting for. Make sure that you're strapping on to those bags. Here we have right here, Ripple Partner, ACI, Fed now could easily grow to become one of the largest payments and clearing settlement systems in the world. I'm going to say that again. Fed now, which we understand that the real live date is July the 20th, will become and could easily grow to become one of the largest payment and clearing settlement systems in the world. We know for sure that XRP is operating on the SWIFT system as currency. We know for sure that XRP will be operating on the FedNow system as currency. We know for sure that Ripple is a partner with ACI and SWIFT and FedNow. This is the middle of this new brand new financial system and XRP is going to be the agnostic exchange token. Make sure that you're holding on to those bags, family. Make sure that this is the last opportunity that we have to add to those bags because XRP is going to fly. Thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. This is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but please let everyone know that the high vibe said that the bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates.